Hello and welcome to another edition of the Insurance Dudes podcast. This is Craig Pretzinger and this is another insurance playbook. Now we've gone in and talked about the five P's, right? For running an effective agency and why it was important to create not only income, monthly income, monthly cash flow, but also to increase equity, right? Your actual business value because ultimately we want to do that too. It's not just income, right? It's not a job, right? That's the difference between a job and owning an agency. So. What is the third P and why is it important? You know what that third P is? It's the people. So let's dive in. All right. We are back. Let's talk about people. This is going to be your most important component, right? After the first tip, probably the most challenging thing as an agency owner yourself, right? And a lot of times it can be challenging because sometimes maybe we're too nice of an insurance dude. Maybe we get too emotionally attached to people where uh, we feel bad and that's totally fine, right? It's totally fine to feel bad about having to let somebody go. What we want to do is get away from a lot of feelings around hiring. Now it's important to feel, but when we're talking about hiring, hiring, we really want to try to make it more objective, right? So we need to have criteria. And this is why if we back up and look at the first two P's that we covered, we had the purpose. This is the first P. Second P was principles. And now we're in people. If we don't have the purpose laid out, and then we don't have those core values that support the purpose, it's going to be difficult in the interview to articulate what you're doing, what your agency is doing to differentiate itself and provide help and that extra value to the world. So now we're not just looking for somebody who has a license or somebody who has experience selling insurance. But I found that when we bring people in from outside, yes, may require a little bit extra work to get them up and running. However, they are fully moldable. They don't come with a preconceived set of ideas about how this works. They don't have a way that they've been doing it that isn't similar to yours. So it could be really effective to find people from outside. And you're also not limiting your candidate pool, right? And as we get into this now, we'll probably do another episode after the five P's are done where we really dive deep into the hiring aspect. So remember, we're, we're going to be looking for people who can align with the purpose that we talk about. So when you think about the questions that you ask in an interview, you want to frame them in such a way that it's going to give you an answer as to whether or not they're in alignment with your purpose. So I think that's important, right? You don't ask the specific thing around the question and certainly don't ask yes, no questions. We want to ask those open-ended questions. And then we're going to ask questions. I would put them into situational questions around the core values. So when I went through my core values here, like honesty and ethics, you could try to trick them, put them in a situation where it may be kind of gray area for something and they may want to push the limits. You want to really identify where they sit when it comes to ethics, when it comes to honesty. And there's no room for any gray area in honesty and ethics. We have to draw a line and we have to stay very, very clean when it comes to these things. And then do this same exercise for all of the different core values that you have. Now, what you're doing is setting up an environment so that when we recruit, we're recruiting towards our message. We want to write that ad that we're posting to attract new people into our hiring funnel. We want that ad to align with our purpose because if somebody is attracted to our agency because of our purpose, we have somebody that actually is aligned with us. And then as we interview them and we put them up against all the core values, if they align with the core values, now we have somebody that we're going to be able to really work with, right? It's much more challenging to try to change somebody's value system, right? So what we want to do, we want to hire them on whether or not they're going to make the right decision when the time comes. We want to hire them on all of these things that are then going to make it much easier to bring them in and convince them of the ways that we do the things in the agency because they are already pre-aligned. We want that pre-alignment. Now we have the right people when we bring them in. Well, guess what? They have the right criteria that match with those core values. If we can identify that they're motivated and they really want to bring positivity, they're going to help by elevating everybody else that you have here too. Because as you keep adding people who have these same fundamentals, it's going to strengthen the culture of your organization. It's going to increase the employee lifetime value. I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not going to get into that. 
We're going to talk about that when we get deep on hiring and deep on employees, which we'll do in a few episodes. So you want to make sure that you do subscribe so that you get notified on that. Employee lifetime value. If we're thinking of the people and the way that we attract and then retain those people, if we're looking at them in the same way that we look at our sales, if we start applying the same fundamentals to our hiring funnel, we're going to start seeing similar results. So another thing that we're going to do, we want to attract people that we can empower. We want to attract people that aren't afraid to make a mistake. And it's really important. This is another thing that I've learned over the years. And as I've gotten older, it's become real valuable in empowering people and not being afraid to let them make some mistakes. Like We're not going to just trust that they're going to get it done, but we're going to trust that they're going to get it done. And then we're going to verify. And if they didn't get it done in the way that they got the results that we need, then we need to revisit and look at, at where the mistake was made. We want to focus on the result. So let's talk about the people. What I've noticed is over the years as I did hiring, I used to just have a conversation. I know for me, it's not a good way for me to determine whether or not somebody is a good candidate because I end up liking everybody. So I needed to really get laser beam focused and institute some structure to the interview. All those questioning techniques and the types of questions that I brought up earlier are important to that structure. But what it does is, and what we found was when I compared my turnover for the years that I just kind of did it from my gut, and just had a conversation, the turnover was much higher. The results were much far less. As we added the structure, as we added the processes, which we're going to talk about in the next P, as we attracted people using these frameworks and structures in the interviewing process, what we found was not only did people stay longer, we had a better fit once they came on and they were far quicker to get to results or expose themselves that they weren't capable of doing it. So really important. Our employee lifetime value has gone up significantly. Significantly, most folks, on average, we retain people for longer than a year now. So as we think about that, that's a critical piece, right? So on the hiring, we talked on the recruiting, on creating those ads that will attract people to your purpose and your core values. And then finally, as we train, and we'll get into this a little bit more when we're talking about processes, but if we have the right structure once somebody comes on, another significant difference, right? But people who come into an environment where there's good structure and clearly defined and articulated path to the desired outcomes, when all of that is there, the person is much more successful. They're much happier with their experience. They're far faster to get to the results and they stay for much longer. So it's really important to take consideration of these things. And as we hire people who are going to understand that, we're able to invest more money towards the new client acquisition component, towards the sales, right? Towards bringing in more business instead of of keeping all this money over to make up for that turnover, right? So another huge epiphany that came out of it just by putting some structure. So I'm going to stop it at that and invite you to come back on the next one because we're going to dive into processes, which is the fourth P. And then of course, the episode after that, we will be talking about performance. So that is people. Appreciate you guys listening. Hope this is helpful. If it is, throw something in the comments. If you know somebody who hasn't ever heard of us, please share it. Why not? Come on, social media, be social. We appreciate you. Take care. Bye.